Hey, so I paralyzed math and history, and we're going to look at the different types of answers that we can get when we are trying to solve the quadratic formula and try to find what the two x's are in a quadratic trinomial. So remember, the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And there are currently four different types of answers that we can get while we are solving the quadratic formula. Currently, there are no real solutions. We're also going to get one solution. And we are also going to get two solutions. But the reason why there are many different types of answers that we can get to the quadratic formula is not just we have no solutions, one solution and two solutions. Sometimes they can be rational or irrational. For example, your one solution type answer is always going to be rational. And that means an answer with a whole number, like the number 9, for example. No real solutions is going to be not an answer because it's going to be like the square root of negative 3. And what is the square root of negative 3? It's not really possible until you look into higher level math using the letter I and imaginary numbers. Squidward, we don't need television. Not as long as we have our imagination. With imagination, I can be anything I want. A pirate. Arr. A football player. A, a starfish. Patrick, you're already a starfish. See, Squidward, it works. The noises. How are you two making those noises? Well, that's easy. All you need is a box. And... Imagination. So, but in the ninth grade curriculum, it's theoretically not possible. With the two solutions, it's always going to be irrational. It's going to be irrational a lot. Because a lot of the times, you get like negative 4 plus my square root of 10, divide that by 69. You wouldn't find a decimal as represented for x, but sometimes, but not as often, you will get rational numbers. That means numbers that are like x equals 6 and x equals 9. There are two solutions, but we have two different answers for x's. So it could be irrational or rational. So remember, no real solutions is a negative square root. One solution will always become a whole number. And two solutions could be rational, which is a whole number with two solutions, or irrational with decimals and numbers that go on forever and ever and ever. So let's start looking into some of the problems and figure out what kind of answer it is. Okay, we have 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 equals 0. We, wrote, we rewrote the quadratic formula. And when we insert all the numbers for the a, b, and c value into the formula, here's the second part. This is what would have looked like. The third step is we had to simplify what's inside the square root. So 9 minus 32 is negative 23. And this is where the negative 23 is going to mess up the entire equation. Because what is the square root of negative 23? Well, the thing is, it's theoretically not possible for now. We can talk about this with the letter I a bit later. But right now, there's no real solution. You can never square root a negative 23, or you can never square root a negative number 
unless you use the letter I or imaginary numbers. So always remember, when you have a square root that's a negative, it will always become no real solutions. The square root destroys everything. So we got that correct, or we got that down. Let's look at another one. Okay, so we have 3x squared plus 6x minus 9 equals 0. We always want to rewrite the formula because we want to memorize it for future quizzes and tests. When we insert all your variables into the formula, this is what it's going to look like. The third one, x equals negative 6 positive minus square root 36 plus 108. When we do that, we get x equals negative 6 positive negative the square root of 144. When we do that, we can change it and simplify it because the square root of 144 is 12 times 12. So 12 is going to be equal to the square root of 144. Once we simplify that, we have two answers. x equals 1 or x equals negative 3. That is this scenario right here. There are two more we have to look at. The one solution and the two solutions with an irrational answer. Let's see what the next one is. So we have 3x squared plus 4x minus 8 equals 0. We did the quadratic formula. The second one is what the quadratic formula would look like when we put the a, b, and c value in them. And we have negative 4, positive negative, the square root of 16 plus 96. And that is equal to the square root of 112. What we could do is simplify it. What two numbers could be multiplied into 112, but also be a square root? We use the numbers 16 and 7, and since the square root of 16 is 4, we can now simplify it and put it in front of the square root of 112. We have x equals negative 4, positive minus 4 square root 7, because we never use the 7. That will give us two answers. This x equals negative 2 plus 2 square root 7 divided by 3, or x equals positive 2 plus 2 square root 7 minus, not minus, divide by 3. And the reason why we can't simplify it further is we never really want any decimals or numbers that go on forever and ever and ever. So we are going to say it's an irrational solution. Two solutions with irrationals because they keep going forever and ever and ever. The last one we're going to look at is a one solution. Here is the example. Okay, so we have x squared plus 12x plus 36 equals 0. We rewrite the formula so we can understand and memorize it. The bottom one shows what your formula would look like when you insert your three variables into here. So we have x equals negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 minus the square root of 144. Well, 144 minus 144. We got the square root of zero? 
Huh? So when we have the square root of zero, that is equal to zero, because zero times zero is zero. So negative 12 plus minus zero divided by two. We get only one answer, because we, no, no, we no longer need the positive negative symbol anymore. X equals negative 12 divided by two. X equals six. That's our answer for this one. So that is the one solution one. Don't you realize something strange about this? Huh. No. Well, every time you look at the square root, and every time you look at what it does to the quadratic formula, it always dictates to what you're going to get as an answer. Because we just learned that when you have the square root of zero, it's always going to be one solution. If you are going to have, for this one for example, the square root of 144, that's going to dictate the entire quadratic formula. And that will get us to two solutions. So when you do that, we're going to have a perfect square that will get us two solutions. So when you have a perfect square root, we'll get two rational solutions. No irrational numbers. When you have a negative square root, it's always going to be no solution. So the square roots are always going to dictate what your answer for the quadratic formula is. Negative, negative square root, that's going to bring us to no solution. And last but not least, in the last scenario, the square root of 112 is going to change everything. That describes that when we have the square root of a non-perfect number, that will end up being um, two irrational numbers. So two irrational answers. That will be long, long decimals. So don't you realize every time you look at the square root or what you get when you simplify inside the radicand, because you always got to simplify what's inside the square root first. When you get it to a single number inside the radical, it's always going to understand before you know the answer what kind of answer you will get. And these are all the four scenarios that we have learned today just by the square root overpowering the entire formula. And that is how we can understand what answer we can get in the quadratic formula. I hope this video has helped you. Thanks for watching Tapping Your Life's Math Industry. Like and subscribe.